We're setting up a Raspberry Pi for retro gaming. We're gonna need a Raspberry Pi starter kit and then also an SD card reader. So on our computer, we can set it up. Let's jump right into this, not waste any time. Uh, first things first, what we're gonna wanna do is go on to Raspberry Pi's website, download the imager. Uh, you can use Linux, Windows, Mac for this. With this imager, you install it. We're gonna go ahead and choose what we're gonna do. We're gonna go right into emulation, retro Pi. That's my favorite. And then just choose your model. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3 for this one. Uh, the latest and greatest is Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, and then we just select the storage, which I'm gonna go plug in right now. All right, I've installed the storage. Now we'll choose that. And then we'll just click right and say yes. And now we just sit back and let it do all the work. This is how much easier this has gotten. I've seen a lot of old guides out there. They're like, oh, it used to be so much more difficult, but uh, let's get this done and then we'll boot up our Raspberry Pi and I'll show you the configuration of RetroPie so we can put all our games and also change some settings to just uh, make it more functional. Now on initial startup here, you'll notice that it is resizing. So the initial boot's gonna be a little bit longer uh, and then you should get your RetroPie after the resize happens. So let's let it do its thing on our initial startup. Now, if you do need to log in through the console here, the password or the defaults are Pi as the username and Raspberry is gonna be the password. Now for the configuration, a lot of times I like to use just uh, whatever retro controller I have. This is a Super Nintendo one. So we're gonna just go ahead and hold our A button and program these in. A lot of these ones I'm not gonna be able to actually do uh, just because we're gonna be missing things for let's say a PlayStation or uh, you know another controller that might be there. So when you have those like triggers I don't have, thumbsticks I don't have, what you do is just kind of hold whatever button uh, until it moves on to the next. And then we just hit A to finish out. All right, and this is the default screen after you've configured your controller. You can come into the RetroPie configuration and then just use your controller to set audio, Bluetooth. And uh, this is pretty much set up. The first thing I wanna do is probably put it on my Wi-Fi. We will need a keyboard for this. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and do that. And we're gonna do some configuration with this. So the first thing we do once it's booted up and we go into our config is system options and then set up our wireless LAN or if you have it connected hardwired, that would be preferable, but most people don't. So we're just gonna go down to US, set our country of origin and then put my Wi-Fi password in. All right, with that done, I like to just do an update to make sure everything's up to date and also just to see if it actually pulled my Wi-Fi. But it looks like everything's up to date from the image. And we are pretty much done with this. Uh, and we're already connected to our Wi-Fi and have our IP. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit exit. And we're coming back into our settings menu. So you can change your splash screens, do a bunch of other different stuff. The other thing I'd recommend you doing is coming into like Retro Arch if you're doing any uh, fun achievements, which uh, I'll show that here in a little bit. Uh, but you probably want to register with an achievement website and then you can have achievements on your old retro games, which makes this just pretty darn awesome. And just to kind of show, like, there's a ton of different settings in here. You don't really need to change much past the defaults, but I do like to go ahead and turn on achievements and then go into the achievements website and register with my username and password. And that way I can kind of compete with other people and it adds a new depth to a lot of retro games. But with that said, I'm just gonna hold uh, select and get out of here, but just know that retro achievements is a thing. Now, by default, the hot key or to get back to the main menu from your controller is start and select at the same time. Uh, we'll usually get you back if you're on like an Xbox 360 controller, like I have right here. Uh, just the middle button should actually get you back to the thing right here, the little Xbox button. So with that done, we're on the network, everything's up to date. Uh, we now can go ahead, go back to our PC and start loading this thing up with some ROMs and I'm gonna show you how that looks. But if you can't find that, come down to show IP and this IP will show you where it's located on the network. This IP for this box is 192.168.69.136. So we'll hit okay to that and now we know what IP to type in our browser. Now you can do this Windows, Mac, Linux. Again, it doesn't matter on the operating system. Uh, let's just come back in. 
to our operating system and do that now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to get to this. We're just gonna go uh, open up our file browser and then just type in that uh, 136 was where that RetroPie is. You can see a couple different things here. BIOSes you're probably gonna need if you're gonna do any PlayStation emulation. Since I'm in a Raspberry Pi 3, it's not really powerful enough to really go into like PS1. And some PS1 games play okay. PS2 is a little dicey. Um, uh, and just doesn't work very well on a Raspberry Pi 3. However, if you have a newer Raspberry Pi, like a Raspberry Pi 4, you could come into BIOS and then like put on, I think, PS3 or in PS2 BIOSes and, and do some emulation on some more powerful PCs. However, for today, since we're using just a 3, we're just going to do some basic ones. And what we do is drop ROM files into here. So Game Boy Advance, you got N64, you got NES, um, Sega, uh, Super Nintendo, obviously, we're going to be loading up a lot of Super Nintendo games because that was kind of my, my platform of choice. Uh, so let's come into here and then you'll see there's nothing in here. So we need to add ROM files and I can't tell you where to get ROM files, uh, other than you need to be backing up old games and you can use, uh, some equipment to do that. Or if, uh, you know of another way to get a ROM file, you can also use that. But sadly, I can't give you exactly where to go download ROM files from the internet. So we got our ROM files in here. You'll see on Super Nintendo, so those are considered SMCs right here. And then let's go back and we're gonna load up some other ones. Let's go to Nintendo next and load some ROM files here. Show you kind of what the extensions would look like. Don't drag and drop, obviously, zip files and things like in there, it won't read them. Okay, regular Nintendo, we got a couple games in here. That's where this one will be. Uh, these are actually always going to end with NES. We'll move on to Nintendo 64, load that up as well. All right, now that we got our games loaded up, I already loaded back into the RetroPie, as you see here, and scraped all the games. You might be like, what is this scrape? And let's go over that for a second. Um, if you go into your start menu, hit scraper, and you want to scrape from every every game and usually just leave all these settings default and then typically if you have a whole bunch of games like i just did about a thousand games um just different roms and things uh and usually what i like to do is turn that off for the initial scrape that way it's just able to fly through all the games and then you can go back through and fix any uh, uh games that got mismatched so let's look at a game that got mismatched real fast and just like look at maybe something that might not be uh have the proper artwork or something. So let's go back to like my favorite game, like Final Fantasy III, that looks pretty good. You can kind of go through here and let's see if there's anything that got missed. These are like my all time favorite games for Super Nintendo and like Aladdin Japan version. I know that's wrong because I don't ever have a Aladdin Japan version. So let's just come into select and then edit this game's metadata. And then we're going to change the actual scrape. So we'll come down to scrape down here and scrape it and then switch it to this version. And there we go. So that's a good example of that. And we'll save it out. And then if we come back in, you can see you have the proper artwork. So sometimes you do run into things where it just uh, it may not grab the proper one here in Chess Master. It actually didn't grab any of that. Let's uh do another scrape for it just to show you that and we'll take out the and see if we can search for the chess master there we go perfect and that is it and these are like all my favorite games from childhood and this basically fixes up so then you have a perfect uh view of all this and there's still some other ones like obviously i didn't have a Japan version of this Yoshi's Island. So we can fix those, but we're gonna move on from now, go to my favorite game of all time, Final Fantasy III, better known as Final Fantasy VI uh, across the world. And you'll get this, don't push any button when it goes to launch up, you just let it go. And on the initial launch, it might take a little bit longer, but uh, afterwards it should load right in. Now I don't have any sound hooked up to this because it's just coming through my capture card, um, but 
to get back to the main menu, just hit start and select at the same time again, but we'll go back in. Other cool aspects is you can actually make hotkeys to do save states as well. Uh, that's really nice. Like I usually I think it's like F5 or something on the keyboard to do a save state. You can set up those hotkeys to where you can play these old retro games, but kind of take some of the difficulty out of them, uh, such as like Sonic the Hedgehog and those types of games where you had to play through the entire game in one go. You could easily get into the game, play through, let's say a little bit, or maybe you're playing Final Fantasy three or six and, and you're like, okay, well, I, I can't get all the way to the save spot right now and I'm in the middle of something I gotta leave. You could hit save game state and then just restore that game state on startup, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, let me see if I can't show that real fast. So by default, you can do uh, select and right shoulder like that and it'll save it to the slot. So let's, uh, let's go like that and go, okay, here it is. But if we go select in left shoulder, it'll revert back to that game state. So let's do that. Boom. And it, you see how powerful that is just because you can reverse the game slots. You can also change different game slots. You can have up to 10 or 100 game slots if you wanted uh, and easily change which version. So you can make a whole bunch of different slave, uh, save slots that never existed. Uh, so this is pretty cool. I love how everything can just be controlled with a simple emulated controller. Now, obviously, I probably should get something a little bit better than this. This is like a $5 controller off Amazon, uh, but they make some really nice Bluetooth uh, Super SNES ones. My personal favorite, though, if you want full compatibility, let's say you're going to be playing more modern games like PlayStation and stuff, uh, Xbox 360 has the absolute best compatibility I've found. I absolutely love the 360 ones. So come into here, retroachievements.org, and set up an account, log in, and then go through that config menu on uh, the, the Raspberry or RetroPie setup. And once you enter all this in, as soon as you go in, you can see your latest achievements. Let me log in real fast and show you my achievements. And you can see on the completion progress on the right-hand side, all the different ones that I've done, and uh, it looks like Legend of Zelda is the one I've done the most completion on. But it's neat, so you can actually track how, how complete you are on a game and uh, certain things like that. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you can see all the different achievements I've made. Uh, I did this back in 2017, uh, but one of my favorite all-time games is the original Le Legend of Zelda. Uh, so cool that you can now track your progress and also even get achievements in mod, you know, these retro games like you do in your modern day ones. But this should at least get you going and just really enjoy uh, gaming a lot more. And with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one.